What's going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here and the year is 2020 and with everything going on in the world I think we can all agree that the fact that we are at least getting the beginning of a football season is one of the best things to come out of the year 2020 so far with having to wear a mask everywhere with the coronavirus with every tragic event that keeps on happening this year and all the divide in our country I think we could all just sit down and agree as football fans that the fact that the NFL season is here is amazing and it will unite us all. I already did a couple of fantasy drafts, so it really, really starts to feel like the football season is underway. And we are now officially, as I'm recording this on September 6th, a week away from Jacksonville Jaguar football. And that is my favorite team, your favorite team, and your mom's favorite team, of course, opening up its season. And in the last couple of weeks... If there were still some hope in your body that the Jacksonville Jaguars were going to have a great season and that they weren't tanking, I think that that probably exited your body with the releasing of Leonard Fournette, the training of Rodney Harrison, and everything else in between. So now there is just a ton of uncertainty relaying the Jacksonville Jaguars. But nonetheless, they're going to open their season up against division rival Indianapolis Colts in week one of the NFL season. And that is this upcoming Sunday. So we are back to video previews, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, this is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Indianapolis Colts week number one preview. So I sat down and did a Jaguars season preview about a couple months ago that now has about 1.1 thousand views. And that was before the whole Leonard Fournette cutting the Ronnie Harrison trade and all that stuff went down to where the Jaguars fully look like they're in complete tank mode. And in that video, I said the Jaguars should be set up to win about six to seven games at most. And that was being, you know, years still away from being a true contender on the team. I mean, a true contender in the AFC because, you know, they still have a lot of youth on the team. They still need to mesh together. I was still accounting for the fact that, you know, like guys like Yannick and Gawkway weren't going to be around. Obviously, you know, they still traded Clayus Campbell away. AJ Boye were, weren't going to be here. And, you know, there still were some question marks all around this team and, you know, certain position groups. So, you know, six, seven wins was still, you know, improvement, you know, back to back. Uh, seasons from where the Jags usually are, you know, where they went two, four games, back to two. You know, winning six games two years in a row is still kind of, you know, that constant movement. You know, you'd still see guys probably like Doug Marone lose his job and probably Dave Caldwell as well. But, you know, as a team as a whole, you know, that still kind of looks like, you know, still kind of looks like the product that they're putting on the field is meshing well together and, you know, they could develop. But after, you know, waving Leonard Fournette, the Ronnie Harrison trade, and everything else in between, it really looks like this team is tanking. Doug Marone and Dave Caldwell can say all that they want, you know, and that they won't have a job next year if this team is tanking. The only person that I believe that truly doesn't think this team is tanking, that is speaking to the media right now, is Gardner Minshew. And that is because Gardner Minshew knows, like, this is his team right now. This is the first time since high school he's entered any situation where he's the undoubtable starter, and he wants to play hard, and he wants to ball, and he wants to have that opportunity. So I know for a fact if the Jags are going to have, you know, any shot of winning, then Gardner Minshew is going to have to ball out of his mind and play extremely well. And Gardner Minshew will have to put that product on the field. But as far as how this team is, you know, being built right now and with the draft picks and, you know, cutting a guy that was your best offensive piece a year ago, everything that this front office is doing looks like this team is going to be in really bad shape this year. And they open up their season to play a division rival in the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts are in another unique situation where they're going to be uh, playing with a new quarterback. Um, obviously, this quarterback situation for these two teams are similar but different. So Gardner Minshew is somewhat a new quarterback for the Jaguars. Obviously, you know, he played in those seven games last year. But he was never the starting quarterback. You know, he was never announced as the team's, you know, go-to guy. Obviously, Nick Foles was that guy heading into the 2019 season, and Gardner Minshew emerged as the guy later on. And, you know, became a fan favorite. Now Gardner Minshew is the und undoubtable starter here for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And he's going to be, hopefully, for the remainder of the season. Because the Jags cut Josh Dobbs and Mike Glennon. And, you know, Jake Luton is the next 
man up, and you know you don't want a Jake Luton in there. You want to hope Gardner Minshew can finish the season out for better or for worse. So there's some excitement there for the Jacksonville Jaguar fans. As for the Indianapolis Colts, obviously they got the seasoned vet, the man that usually kills the Jaguars in Philip Rivers. Philip Rivers as a whole, I don't know how he's going to pan out for Indianapolis, but Philip Rivers has a great track record against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Every time the Jags would play uh, Philip Rivers and the Chargers, it always seemed like the Chargers would put it on the Jaguars, especially if it was in San Diego or Los Angeles, wherever it was, um, even in Jacksonville. I mean, the Jags just suck at playing in the West Coast in general, so, you know, that's always going to be a problem, but now that... Philip Rivers is in Indianapolis. Maybe it's going to be different because, you know, it's not on the West Coast, but that's really picking at straws there. But Philip Rivers is a guy that has a lot of good history against the Jacksonville Jaguars, and he's going to be facing a defense that he should pick apart, and that is why I think the Jaguars are going to struggle in this game. The Jaguars are going to have to score a lot of points, and in order to score a lot of points, you need to have reliable offense. And the Jaguars needed to have reliable offense. They needed to have a reliable running back. And who was that? Leonard Fournette. Not on the team anymore. You're relying on Rock Armstead and Raquel. I mean, Rock Armstead and Chris Thompson to be those reliable running backs with Gardner Minshew tossing the ball. And that's not going to be good enough, man. Phillip Rivers is a now 15, 16, 17 year vet in the league, something like that. And you're going to be having him face up against the secondary. That, you know, just traded away Ronnie Harrison. And even if Ronnie Harrison was in the secondary, I mean, you look at it. I mean, you got Jared Wilson back there. C.J. Henderson is your number one corner. And it's going to be exciting to see C.J. Henderson perform. Obviously, he's going to be going up against a veteran, experienced wide receiver in T.Y. Hilton his first go around. So you're really going to see, you know, what this kid is made of. This rookie corner who, you know, is entering a situation where he has to be the number one corner. And he has to shut down these number one guys. And that's why the Jags drafted him. So, you know, he's entering that situation right off the bat against a guy that has a lot of experience in T.Y. Hilton. And, of course, he has a quarterback with a ton of experience as well, a future Hall of Famer in Phillip Rivers. So that's going to be a test for them. And the defense, man, they just they got to show up. That's all it is. Because I can see the Colts scoring like 30 points on us, and it's just going to be a wash, and it's not going to matter because just of how much experience and how much depth this team has compared to the Jaguars on the defense. I mean, you're going to have to have these pass rushers and some of these young guys that you're really counting on step up. You know, Clavon Chase on C.J. Henderson, the Jaguars' two first-round picks are going to have to be crucial in this game. And, you know, guys like Taven Bryant, who, you know, you're expecting to play a bigger role, Avery Jones, uh, Timmy Jernigan, you know, these guys that you have on the defensive line you know, is going to be going up against the Colts offensive line, which is another matchup that is not favorable for the Jaguars. You know, this offensive line is going to give Phillip Rivers tons of time to pass the ball. And when he has tons of time to pass the ball against the secondary that's matching up against, you know, these wide receivers, Phillip Rivers has that time to pick apart the Jags. And this is going to be a game where Phillip Rivers is going to complete like somewhere like 70%, 80% of his passes and T.Y. Hilton, you know, is going to have a big day. And he's going to have, you know, a lot of numbers going up against a rookie corner. That's not like to say C.J. Henderson isn't going to have a promising future or C.J. Henderson's a bad corner. But, I mean, if you look at pound for pound, matchup for matchup between this Colts offense and this Jaguars defense, it's just, it's unmatched. And I think that's going to be, you know, the biggest problem for the Jags heading into this season is, yeah, you got a lot of, you know, talented wide receivers out there that have potential to, you know, make a lot of plays. But this defense, man, is not going to enter a lot of games where the matchups are going to favor them. They're not. That's just the fact of the matter. They're not going to enter, you know, a lot of games where their, our secondary is going to match well with the other team's wide receivers. You know, there's not going to be a lot where our defensive line is going to, you know, win against their offensive line. There's just not a lot of games or matchups where the Jags are going to have the edge in those matchups. It's just facts. They're not, you know, and and this is going to be a game where the Jags won't have it, and they got to play this team twice a year. So that's going to be hard on the defensive side. As far as the offensive side, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited to see Minshew play. I'll always be excited to see Minshew play. Um, I'm excited to see how these young receivers do. You know, and obviously seeing a new offensive system 
and uh, Jay Gruden, obviously, John DeFilippo was very, you know, it was a very flat offense. It was never built for Minshew in the first place. Ho hopefully Gruden and, you know, Minshew have been able to work something, you know, work together to kind of form an offense that, you know, really caters to Minshew and really, you know, plays to his strengths and make sure that the Jags can, you know, at least keep up with the Colts and keep up with some of these offenses because this defense is going to be allowing a lot of points just because the matchups aren't there. So, unfortunately, I think the Jaguars will lose this matchup against the Indianapolis Colts to open up the season simply because the matchups just aren't there. And, you know, if the Jags are going to, you know, win this one, they're going to have to score a lot of points. And we're going to really see how the offense is going to perform right off the bat. But if I'm a betting man, I'm going to be betting on the Indianapolis Colts. I love the Jags to death, but clear and, you know, concise analysis says... The Jags just don't have enough gas in the tank to beat the Colts week one of the season. And that was my Jacksonville Jaguars versus Indianapolis Colts week one preview. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.